Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chauhan and you are watching Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Coming to you with a brief of what all happened in the Indian courts today. Starting with the Supreme Court, which today directed the Delhi police to provide protection to a 20-year-old girl who expressed apprehension that there was a threat to her life from her own family members. In 2022, the girl had been granted a right to live her life on her own by Madhya Pradesh High Court after she stated that she did not wish to live with her family. The case before the vacation bench of the Supreme Court, comprising Justice Bela Trivedi and Justice Prashant Kumar Mishra, was concerning an alleged abduction of the 20-year-old girl by the petitioner. The petitioner argued that he had not abducted the girl, she had willingly fled her house. Accordingly, he had challenged an order passed by Madhya Pradesh High Court through which his anticipatory bail was cancelled. But the Supreme Court expressed its disinclination in interfering with the High Court order as the bail was cancelled because he was not cooperating with the investigation and was not responding to the investigating officer despite being called. The 20-year-old today appeared in person in the Supreme Court and categorically stated that she was a major and nobody had kidnapped or abducted her. Instead, she had left her family on her own will as they were abusive and were forcefully getting her married, though she wanted to pursue her education further, and that now she lived on her own in Varanasi. As she was not a party to the case, during the hearing, Justice Bela Trivedi asked her as to how she got to know about the present matter, to which the girl replied that a friend had informed her about the case. However, she refused to name the friend. You can click the below given link to read about the entire courtroom exchange in the matter. An important update today came from the Allahabad High Court in the ongoing Gyan Vapi Mosque issue. The background, as you know, is that Hindu women worshippers have moved a suit before the Varanasi court seeking a right to worship Ma Shringar Gauri on the outer wall of the mosque complex, which is located next to the Kashi Vishwanath temple. The plaintiffs have claimed that the present mosque premises were once a Hindu temple and it was demolished by Mughal ruler Aurangzeb and thereafter the present mosque structure was built. The maintainability of that very suit was challenged by the Anjuman Committee last year by way of filing an application under Order 7 Rule 11 of CPC, arguing that Hindu worshippers' suit is barred by the Places of Worship Act 1991. However, the objection was rejected by the Varanasi Court in September last year. Then, the Anjuman Committee filed a revision plea before the Allahabad High Court against this rejection. Last year, in December, the bench of Justice J.J. Munir had reserved its judgment after hearing counsels for both the parties at length, and today the High Court has dismissed the revision plea moved by the Anjuman Intazamia Mosque Committee. Stay tuned for further updates in the matter. The Telangana High Court today granted anticipatory bail to the Kadapa MP Y.S. Avinash Reddy in the murder case of Vivekanand Reddy, former MP and leader of Indian National Congress, observing that no direct evidence was available against Avinash Reddy to prove his participation in a larger conspiracy. The bench of Justice M. Lakshman observed that the entire case rested upon hearsay and assumptive evidence. The court was hearing the pre-arrest plea of Reddy, who was summoned by CBI in connection with a probe into the murder of his uncle Vivekanand Reddy. The court also noted that the petitioner had cooperated with the CBI and had responded seven times to the summons. In the same order, Justice M. Lakshman also said that certain attempts were made by selective media to intimidate and threaten to derail independent thought process in arriving at a just decision in this matter and tarnish his reputation by personal attack. Justice Lakshman thus directed the registry to place the order before the Chief Justice for appropriate action along with the video clips of Maha News and ABN News Telugu with regard to early night debates over the proceedings of the case. 
The Kerala High Court today dismissed the plea filed by Sabu M. Jacob, the president of the 2020 party and the managing director of Kitex Garments, seeking safe translocation of the rogue elephant Ari Komban back to Kerala. The elephant was earlier translocated to Perrier Tiger Reserve for allegedly foraging into the human settlements in Chinna Canal area. However, as per reports, the elephant moved close to human settlements in Tamil Nadu, leading to issuance of an order by the Chief Wildlife Warden CWW Tamil Nadu Forest Department to tranquilize and capture and translocate the elephant to the deep forest in Tamil Nadu. At the outset, the division bench comprising Justice Alexander Thomas and Justice C. Jaya Chandran found that the petitioner had neither made out any factual averments or legal grounds to show that the order issued by the CWW is illegal, nor had he challenged the same. The court also orally expressed its doubts as to the bona fide of the petitioner Sabu M. Jacob in filing the present writ petition. In another update, the Karnataka High Court has held that sexual assault on the dead body of a woman will not attract the offence of rape punishable under Section 376 of Indian Penal Code. It thus acquitted a man of rape charges for committing sexual assault on the dead body of a 21-year-old girl after murdering her. A division bench of Justice B. Virappa and Justice Venkatesh Nayak partly allowed the appeal filed by the convict, thereby setting aside the conviction under Section 376 of the Code. However, the court upheld his conviction for murder and confirmed the life imprisonment sentence imposed by the trial court. And now coming to an update from the Delhi High Court, which today directed the CBI to take steps to arrest Virendra Dev Dixit, a self-styled godman and chief of a Rohini-based ashram, who is absconding and has been declared a proclaimed offender in a sexual exploitation case. With respect to the fact that a large number of ashrams throughout the country connected to Dixit were existing, the division bench of Chief Justice Satish Chandra Sharma and Justice Subramanian Prasad asked the CBI to investigate the ownership of such ashrams, from which accounts the funds were being released towards payment of rent to owners of ashrams and documents on the basis of which properties were let out to the residents. The Kerala High Court has held that an application for education loan by a student cannot be rejected on the ground of a low Credit Information Bureau Limited score, that is a Sybil score. The petitioner in this case, who is a student, had availed two loans, of which one was overdue for Rs 16,667 and the other loan was written off by the bank. Due to these reasons, the Sybil score of the petitioner was low. Justice P. V. Kunhi Krishnan cautioned banks to adopt a humanitarian approach while considering applications for education loans. He said that students are the nation builders of tomorrow, they have to lead the country in future and so application for education loan cannot be rejected simply because there is low civil score to a student. The Orissa High Court has criticized police for showing lackadaisical attitude in not producing before the court some persons arrested under the stringent provisions of the NDPS Act within the statutory period of 24 hours. It also rebuked the special NDPS judge for not granting bail to them despite such delay. Single judge bench of Justice Sashikant Mishra termed the detention to be illegal and in violation of constitutional provisions. The case relates to a raid that was conducted by the police in October 2022 where the present petitioners were held while carrying huge quantity of brown sugar. A petition was filed on November 2022 alleging that the petitioners were not produced before the special judge within 24 hours of their arrest. It was also alleged that they were actually arrested between 5.40 pm and 6.20 pm, however were forwarded to the court of the special judge in his residential office after 11 pm on the next day. To know in detail about the case, you can visit the link given in the description box below. Observing that the press should not exceed the limit of fair comment, a Delhi court has said that the press must not publish anything which is manifestly defamatory against any individual or institution. 
unless it is duly verified and there is sufficient reasons to believe that it is true and the publication will be for public good. Additional District Judge Ravinder Bedi of Karkarduma quotes further added that though the press has a right to highlight cases of corruption and irregularities in public bodies, as a custodian of public interest, such material should be based on irrefutable evidence and published after due inquiry and verification from the concerned source and after obtaining the version of the person or authority being commented upon. The court was hearing a suit moved in 2016 by Atma Ram, a former superintendent engineer of Delhi Development Authority against the editor of a fortnightly newspaper, Tahirpur Times. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can check the links given in the description box below. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on live law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us.